We would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. On Skillshare you can explore new skills with inspiring classes in film and video, animation, fine arts and more. We recommend Roman Muradov's class Illustration with Ink, Techniques for Brush and Pen. We particularly enjoyed his unique style of mark making and his deep dive into composition for illustration. You can get access to a curator platform made especially for learning. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule. The first 1,000 people to use the link in our description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so you can explore your creativity. Welcome to the Cinema Cartography. Do you remember this place? You should. You've been here before. An area that exists betwixt the familiar and the complete unknown. A passage between one world gone and one unfinished. What is it about areas such as these that evoke such unique emotion? The tools sufficient in understanding our own society are often handed to us from examining the customs and functions of another. Yet the globalised capitalism that has permeated the world has left the planet in a state of sameness, leading us to believe the modern Western world to be beyond symbolic reading, rendering such places to serve as purposeless entities in both space and time. The areas currently on the screen are photos I took in a relatively small area, yet they aim to completely embody the way most of your worlds also appear. We have breached beyond postmodernity into the era of hypermodernity, and the world we've created has bred what has been coined as non-spaces. Places whose function is temporaneous and outside of grand history. Hence the Western anthropological principles of examining what we deem exotic societies as the only way of examining humanity, for they exist in real spaces. Yet our experience will always be elsewhere for someone. We are subjects worthy of examination in the hope that others find clarity. Perhaps the modern affliction of isolation is one exclusive of the mind, for it's these non-spaces which remind us of our solidarity and our solitude all at once. The individual becomes an expression of the society of which they are a part. And it's this realisation that absolute individuality is inseparable from all that we inherit and all that will be our legacy. The world around us is entwined with our own individuality and thus entwined within a collective identity. The notion of how a space, or in this instance a non-space, can tell a story is a notion that we of contemporary society must deal with every day. These locations mean something. Yet their separation from both space and time means that we live in a world which doesn't necessarily match the world we believe we live in. We do not know how to live in a world wherein places communicate with one another through gestures we have not yet learned to read. You've been here before. This is but one facet of contemporary life. Yet within this epoch lies so much more. These are but the transitory areas between what was on what is to come. They hint towards all the symbols of our culture, the signs of what used to be, only to remind us of the emptiness of the now. Yet we can look at this as something we no longer have, or the freedom of where we may be heading. This is the material space in our world of limbo, the space between life and non-life, the story of humans living. This is the Cinema Cartography Canon, entry number one, Yee Yee. Edward Yang's 2000 magnum opus Yee Yee marks not only the culmination of its master director's artistic vision, it marks a specific point in the story of humanity. The bridge that leads from the end of the 20th century into the beginning of the 21st. But not only does Yi Yi set its sights on telling the story of humanity at a landmark point of transformation, it also examines the grand structures of East Asian familial life. But to say that Yi Yi is a familial drama 
it to diminish the pure scale and complexity of this epic tale of human sensibility. So, because the writing and basically with the writing is the same. The main thing is the content. The content can be moved by not only foreign people. I think the most important thing is that your work is moved by the whole world. By using the content of the whole world, by using the content of the whole world. 一种，呃，以那个目标去写作的话，我想，我想并不是说，呃，去讨好外国人。What is Yi Yi? Literally, what does it mean? In the Western world, we're told that its direct translation means one one. Some people contend this as to say its title is a one and a two. However, this too misses the nuance of the Chinese title, which is a conceptual moniker whose best translation can be surmised. As individually, we follow the lives of individual characters from birth to death, examining the facets, both large and small, within the fabric of all life. You can most likely recall some of the moments in your life when you had what were turning points, a crossroad perhaps, in what a life could become, and simultaneously what it would then cease to be, leaving in it a liminal space of what no longer is. Yi Yi structures itself through the idea of transition. Its characters are related through familial ties, but more so that we witness their current states of being. As being structured through the great sacraments of life, a birth, a first love, departing one's homeland, discovery of affection, the landmark moments that create an individual, and to bookend this humanist tale, Yi Yi opens on a wedding and closes on a funeral. The varying generations of the Jian family is the primary focus of Yi Yi. Their individual stories unfolding in what may appear to be delicate yet disconnected. But is in fact an interwoven and incredibly complex tale, fused together in an overtonal tapestry. Don't tell me now, please. Why? Because you are a good man. This was. When Sergei Eisenstein became the prominent figure in Soviet montage theory, perhaps his most abstract concept was the idea of the overtonal montage, a mixture of the intellectual and emotional aspects of montage that allowed not only the sequencing and pace of a scene to be consistent with the content, but through juxtaposing and supporting imagery. Convey a deeper emotional idea. This concept is a foundation for cinema as it currently stands, and is something so entrenched in the form that most of the time you don't even notice it. Yet take this concept and stretch it across a full narrative feature, allowing the contrasting sequences and characters to discuss with one another through intangible layers of symbols and gestures, and the themes of the story. Will reveal themselves deep in the minds and hearts of the viewers. Such is the case for Yi. The story, in many ways, is a coming-of-age tale. It just so happens that the ages the characters are coming to all deal with different issues. The connectivity comes with the incomplete stories of a person's life being what binds them all. Moments that one character goes through are overlaid through the life of another. We can see a basic example. Near the beginning of the film, we cut from the cacophony of the wedding celebration to the silence of the family car. In one scene, we see the beginning of one family's story. The pregnant wife and husband have officially begun their path as a family. Then we see another family. In the middle of their story, they would have already experienced the landmark moment of their marriage. This is now the transitory moment between whatever large event is to come next. The silent car journey, symbolizing that the majority of our life is in fact a journey from one decisive moment 
to the next. These are the places that Yi Yi positions itself. The moments we may forget, the fleeting moments that take us from one place to another, and the structure of Yi Yi consciously constructs these moments to pace its narrative. Upon Yang Yang discovering the opposite sex, the image of his affection is presented in the foreground of a projected screen of thunder and lightning. From this we cut to his sister in a lost love scenario drenched by the rain, as if it was in the same physical space. The two scenes communicate with one another through this thematic overlapping. The father reuniting with his long lost love is intercut with the daughter on her first date. The crying of a newborn overlaps with the crying of its own father. In Yi Yi, the characters are never alone. They're inexplicably tied together through an emotional tether that runs through the film. The film, although dealing with the dread that comes with isolation, is presented via the individuality of a collective life. The experiences that are what it is to be human. Although we may all appear separate, in Yi Yi, Edward Yang displays solidarity through all our experiences of isolation. Otherwise, his constant usage of lonesome imagery wouldn't seem so familiar. And as we are never really alone, we must interact with our world and the people from it. In Yi Yi, each character is so rich that no encounter becomes arbitrary. The boss of NJ, Yang Yang's teacher, are bursting with purpose and intention. In one scene, Ting Ting's friend Lily encounters at a coffee shop a group of friends that are greeting another friend having returned from his military service. <laughs> And all of these characters don't feel empty. They live in the world and reveal to us that beyond our own lives is a world brimming with others that are just as complex as we. Our side stories happen to be someone's life with their own abundant individuality revealed to us only in parts. Such is the narrative of Yi Yi segments of a person's life, ambiguity and chance are at the centre of it. Characters overwhelmed by their loneliness because their life, like many of ours, seems to have lost its path. Our very identity has been swept aside and all that could have been is presented in the emptiness where we currently stand. Yi Yi is often mistaken as a film that has a completely static camera, similar to that of Ozu. However, this isn't the case. Many of the shots are not static. They just feel as though they are. Edward Yang employs the camera technique of panning or moving the camera very rarely, but each shot is bookended by long static takes. These moments of reflection imbue the unceasing individuality amidst a story which is concerned with multiple characters. Much of the story's physical progression is dealt with in the background. <laughs> NJ sits motionless on a pair as his life is at an undecidable crossroads. Meanwhile, the inner turmoil is reflected by the crashing of the waves at his feet. While we are still, the world will forever move. Traffic lights move from red to green and back again. A flock of birds may fly past the window. The background organically changes and shows that although our worlds appear static, there is life constantly moving throughout them. The character of Yang Yang displays the courage of a child by being the character that jumps head first into new challenges. He relishes in his individuality and the ability to be okay with the perspectives of life that are blocked away from him. He chooses to take pictures of the back of people's heads, 
For although there are certain perspectives that he's unable to see, the same goes for all. And perhaps it's through displaying his individuality, the acceptance of hindered perspective, can he grant solace to someone else, so that we may not feel so alone. In NJ's story, a fortuitous discovery akin to this occurs. He keeps his music to himself, always playing it through headphones. Yet when he plays it out loud to Ota, the expression of his own individuality results in a shared experience. Their relationship then becomes intrinsic to their development as humans. This entire time, they'd been connected by another abstract tether. It may not have been visible, yet it's always been there, waiting to show itself. With Yi Yi, Edward Yang hoped to capture the essence of what it was like to live in a city in the year 2000 its usage of surveillance footage, its symbols of new era capitalism, replicate the very contemporary society that our characters live in. This contemporary world displays the internal lives of the characters. We're introduced to their houses which appear lived in, and this external contemporary world which is transforming at a much more accelerated rate. The film's opening sequence is the wedding. Here, Edward Yang suggests an upheaval of norms. Although the traditional Chinese customs are very present, the bride is already pregnant. The couple's photograph is turned upside down. We see that one of the film's struggles is that of Taiwanese identity. For how can an embedded 3,000 year old ideology make its way into the 21st century? After the wedding sequence, the world of Yi Yi very gradually opens up to us. The density of its characters' histories slowly unfold through the numerous layers of life. After the grandiosity of its opening, the remainder of Yi Yi is mostly subdued. We see our characters going to school, their jobs, and the city at large. Much of the narrative is thus told via these transformed surroundings. While the characters undergo arcs which seem pivotal in their lives, their witness to the erasure of the past reflected in the new landscapes of a hypermodern age. The characters of Yi Yi are inseparable from their environments. Their symbiotic nature acts as a motif throughout its language. The numerous reflective surfaces of Taipei show the characters imprinted on the skylines and vice versa. The complementary shots of the people with the world displays the act of some kind of progression. The characters are going into a future where the path ahead is unknowable. The spaces we see are ones that we all seem to recognize. The coffee shops, hospitals, reception halls, apartment hallways. The spaces that are not concerned with identity nor history. Places that become separate from time, isolating themselves from history entirely, making them other becoming the non-space. This liminal existence highlights the erasure of the past, as what was just lived now becomes the distant past, and what's left is a place that hasn't completely destroyed the past, but neither completed its own goals, in a constant state of limbo. And it's our characters that are situated across the entirety of this land. A change is coming, but we ask, is this change temporary or permanent? Basically, I think Taipei is um, is a modern city. Has a lot of uh, you know the characteristics of big cities in the world, and also it, I think it's, it 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 shows. I like to show this uh, phenomenon of the, because this film was made at the end of the last century, where uh, we were we were looking forward to that you know 21st century the arrival of it. And um, this basically is uh, I like to um, on, honestly portray one of the cities that I know I know know best in the world. Maybe people in 
in the future, when they look at this film, they, they know how, how life is, was like. The relation of space is inevitably interlaced with time. In Yi Yi, the grandmother is trapped in a coma, neither fully alive nor dead. The entirety of Yi Yi is almost like being in a waiting room, wondering when the name is called, how our life will never be the same. The modern affliction tells us that we're lonelier than ever. The constant impersonality of the urban world reveals that only when surrounded by so many others do we feel more destitute. Edward Yang can be seen as a modern equivalent of Ozu, his films dealing with familial issues and often approach with an incredibly meditative feel. There's abundant silence, allowing us and the characters moments of deep reflection. Picture for a moment the paradoxical emptiness of a bustling city and linger, meditate, truly think about what this is. Although urban existence has developed a complete removal from our most human needs, Yi Yi demonstrates that just the act of thinking or feeling fills these spaces with humanity. The emptiness of every skyline, office, underpass is filled with humans undergoing the same responses, the shared experience of simple existence. Our individual stories are intertwined in a collective story. Knowledge will always be lost, but there's space for new stories, for new knowledge to be formed. Life moves from happiness to sorrow very quickly, but the adverse is just the same. Modern life has disposed of the specificity of knowledge as to why things are the way they are. And our coexistence with those people and remnants of true history can often make it seem that our personal history, our inherited history, and the grand story of history are connected. Why is Yi Yi important? Because you've been here before. These places that signify loneliness, these signs are all around you. No matter where you're from in the world, we live in an era wherein a complete stranger needs not knowledge to understand your universe, for the comprehension of your symbology only requires recognition. We've become aware that knowledge is being lost day by day. This in itself is a tragedy. And while true, Yi Yi finds a miraculous beauty in this. Eventually, the children will become the bastions of knowledge and custom, and it will be their turn to pass. However, the recognition of the world as something shared, something whose story we all partake in individually, is all we can do to replace the lost knowledge with something hopefully as valuable. This hypermodernity we find ourselves in is one that can feel depressing, and you're right to feel that. But in Yi Yi, the sorrow of modern life is imbued with such richness of character, such sensibility towards the lives of people you encounter every day, that it's a reminder that in absolute emptiness, there's something worth thinking about. Yi Yi rekindles a style of filmmaking which allows the viewer the space to breathe and really consider what we're watching and why we're watching it. There are no answers given to what we've seen, yet upon watching it, for any type of filmmaking to evoke such deep-rooted recognition means that there will always be something to take into the world. We are an expression of the world of the non-space. And perhaps, if we can show that there is more to us than this, then maybe we can make it so.